Uh, of course, we are getting the updates there in terms of uh, an interesting designation for where we sit here when you look at the economy. That update coming uh, from the National Bureau of Economic Research officially uh, labeling the downtrend that we're seeing play out over the last few months. Uh, the end of the longest running expansion cycle here in the U.S. now marking an official recession. And for more on that, I want to get to Yahoo Finance's Brian Chung to break that down. Brian? Well, Zach, it's official. The NBER's dating committee, not the fund kind, but a type that a analyzes whether or not certain economic conditions say if the United States is in a recession, they said it is indeed the case and that the recession began in February 2020, that February 2020 was the peak, which puts to bed the longest economic expansion on record. Keep in mind, before the COVID-19 crisis, that was the longest on record at 128 months, beginning in June 2009. That now over because of the MBER's assessment of where the labor market and where productivity is. And anyone that's been watching Yahoo Finance over the past couple of weeks should not be surprised by this announcement. Rather, the fact that it's official is news, but the fact that millions have lost their jobs and that productivity is effectively, uh, you know, uh, curbed because of the closures across the country and because of the stay-at-home measures should not be a surprise to anyone. The question now is how long will we be in this recession? Normally, the NBER tends to declare recessions when there's two quarters of negative GDP. That's not a standard. It's more of a guideline. But obviously, that hasn't been the case for the COVID-19 crisis, which is at a scale and at a speed that we've never seen before. So the NBER saying based on what it saw in the economy, it didn't need to wait for two quarters of negative GDP, it was saying effectively, we're already in it, Zach. And the other update too, we got today, Brian, from the World Bank, uh, highlighting the uh, slowdown expected across the globe here, uh, more than 5% there, the expectation. What does that number kind of coupled with this news maybe indicate about where we go from here in the economy? Well, the picture is that this isn't just in the United States. This is a global story. And that should, again, not be a surprise to anyone. But the World Bank saying that 5.2% uh, is the contraction that it expects in global GDP for the year 2020 shouldn't be a surprise. But at the same time, it is a gloomier forecast than what we heard from the World Bank sister organization. That's the International Monetary Fund. They had announced back in April that their forecast was negative 3%. So you can kind of see the trajectory over time as people get much more weary about the ability of the economy globally to rebound quickly. Now, here in the United States, the uh, World Bank does say that they expect a contraction of 6.1% GDP for this year, but they do expect a rebound of 4% in 2021. But of course, Zach, you know that percentages don't mean that it'll be a full recuperation, that there could be longer term damage that we need to buckle in for. All right. The latest economic update there from Brian Chung. Appreciate you bringing us that.